I think it's a lampu. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, iPad got light, so okay. <coughs> When Four Corners arrived in Malaysia three weeks ago, we found a country transformed by fear of its Prime Minister. I think there is an atmosphere of total terror. It's an incredibly difficult situation for every individual trying to carry out their jobs. You see, the problem in this country is that everybody is so scared of the Prime Minister. In Malaysia today, dissidents are silenced, political opponents are jailed, and news organisations are shut down. But people are still finding ways to protest. Street artist Fami Reza's image of Prime Minister Najib Razak as a clown has gone viral. I designed the poster and posted it on my social media sites, you know, on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And I received a warning from the Malaysian Twitter police, warning me for posting the poster. Why? What's and wrong? now, and now, and, and not just a warning, I've also been investigated. Um, for, for making the poster. I mean, I'm, I'm being investigated under two, there's two charges. One is under the, Malaysia, the Communications Act, another one under the Penal Code for this poster alone. Why? Why are they cracking down on it? Um, someone wasn't happy with the image and made a police report against me. Authorities are on the lookout for anti-government critics everywhere. Within hours, Farmy Reza's new poster had been torn down after a visit by police. What's happened? Yeah, eight hours later, something like that, you know. Don't know exactly when. But when I talked to the car attendant here at the parking lot, they said the police came here at around 8 p.m. last night, asking him so many questions about the poster, who did it, you know. You know, this is just one more way for them to silent listen in this country. I think you leave this place. Okay. Because why? Yeah. Why, why? Why should we leave? What's? Because he put the stick as a poster. Yes. Here. Yes. It's against the law. It, it's against the law to put up a poster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My prime minister, this country's prime minister's photo. Yes. That is very bad. But why can't we, as citizens, okay, okay. express ourselves? Call I call the police now. You talk to them. Why do you want to call the police? Because he did something wrong. This is our Malaysian law. Right. Yeah. We cannot. Bad things about our Prime Minister. There's no law that says we cannot say bad things okay, about the Prime Minister. Okay, I, I, I'll go and call the police. So you want to call the police on me? Yeah. So yeah, the uncle actually called the police on me. <laughs> but I left the the parking lot already by that time. Yeah. Um, so anyone here who doesn't understand Bahasa Malaysia? Who doesn't understand? Eh? Raise your hands. Okay, I'll try to I try to, to, to speak in full English lah, but if there are some parts where I start to speaking BM, yeah, maybe ask someone next to you to help translate lah, yeah, because sebab aku biasa cakap roja lah, yeah, so, authentic. But, but I'll try to use full English lah, yeah, for the international audience, the crowd. Uh, so my name is Fami Reza, so can we start, Fami? I think can. Uh, okay. Okay, so, uh, it's like we, already here. Yeah, so I think, I think this, uh, uh, sorry, I think just before we start, People will likely trickle in later. So can I ask that we fill up rather than having sort of chairs in between and that maybe just fill up the empty chairs in front and they can just go to the back. It makes it easier. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Um, so my name is Rami Reza. I'm a graphic designer and activist based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So today I'm just going to be, because a lot of people I think know me from the clown image. Lah. Yeah, because it went viral, like the, like the video you saw just now. It went viral, I got arrested for it, I got charged in court for it, facing trial coming up this year for it. But I think a lot of people don't know my background. Lah. 
how I got started, like how I got into all this activism stuff, how I started using design and art in my activism. So my talk today is, will be mostly about my journey in, I think, discovering the power of art, in, in getting your message out there, you know, and the power of art for uh, political activism, yeah. So it's just me sharing my journey, lah. The, the, the journey that I took from my university days up until today, yeah. So it's, it's mostly just very uh, santai when you're sharing, sahaja, lah. Yeah. If at any time you need clarification, just raise your hands, yeah. So um, uh, for those, I think it, the context usually lebih orang Malaysia lebih paham, lah. Right? But sometimes if you don't understand the context, you can also ask me questions or during the Q&A or discussion, we can, you know, discuss further, further about any of the things that I brought up in my presentation. So, because I got slides, so I have to turn off the lampu lah, jangan okay? tidur lah. Okay. Um, oh, I, for those who don't know, yeah, this is the ruling party, the main ruling party lah. We have a coalition party ruling the country, yeah. But inside the coalition party, this is the party that is really, you know, holding power. They're called AMNO and they've been in power for the past 60 years since independence. Yeah, and we are all the prime minister came, prime ministers came from this one party, and this is the current one, the clown Najib Razak. <laughs> yeah, and last year in 2016, I got into trouble. Yeah for depicting the current Prime Minister uh, as a clown. This is Malaysia's Prime Minister Najib Razak and this is his caricature by graphic designer Fami Reza. The artist has been arrested twice since the drawing went viral on social media early this year. Mr. Fami faces up to two years in prison under the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Act. According to the government charges, the image is false and meant to annoy others. Mr. Fahmy says he is innocent. I'm being charged for uh, expressing myself in a democratic country. Mr. Fahmy says he is using his art as a political weapon against alleged large-scale corruption in the country, which he blames on the Prime Minister. So I'm no, more known about for this clown lah, yeah. But my journey, yeah, uh, actually started when I was in university. Yeah, I was lucky lah. After high school, after SPM, I got a scholarship to study in the states. Yeah. So my political awareness and our political consciousness came uh, when I was there lah, in the US lah. I was there for four years, uh, from 1995 to 99. But I didn't get my political awareness from my lecturers or from any of my lectures or classes, yeah, because I studied electrical engineering. <laughs> yeah, very boring, yeah. yeah. Not political at all. So, so where did I get my political awareness or consciousness from? From listening to punk music. I started listening to punk when I was 15, but when I was in the States, yeah, um, I was exposed more, I got more access to a lot more uh, punk music and the whole subculture, yeah? The, the, the whole punk subculture with their zines and uh, political music and lyrics, I think, uh, raised my political awareness, yeah? I started out listening to punk because I like the music. I like the more raw and angry music, yeah? Uh, but when I started reading the lyrics, a lot of punk is basically protest music, rebel music, yeah? They think about issues, yeah? So it was through reading the lyrics, I got uh, more politically aware. Um, this is this is my dorm room lah. When I was in the US, lah. I really immersed myself in the whole uh, punk subculture, punk counterculture, and I think the thing that I learned most from being a punk and being part of the punk subculture is uh, this idea, this essence of um, questioning authority. Yeah, and I think that uh, I continue to have that with me until today. Continue to inspire me, and when, when I was there. I, also have my own radio show, <laughs> college radio, at the college radio station. Uh, that's me during my college days with my friends. Um, and I was really into the whole punk thing, yeah? For 
the last last three years, this is the only pants that I wore. Yeah, it, when I the first time I wore it, it was still blue. Yeah, still new. Yeah, <laughs> and the time that's all, I would put a patch on it. Yeah, that's uh, at the end of after three years. Yeah, and um, besides gaining my political awareness through punk music, I also started doing graphic design. Got into art from punk as well. Yeah. I got friends who play in punk bands. They asked me to design their flyers and posters for their shows, yeah. And that's how I started doing um, design. Yeah, initially just just out of interest as a hobby. And this is before uh, computer age. Everything was hand drawn, hand written, cut and paste, and photocopy. Very DIY. Very easy to do. Anyone can do it. Yeah. Um, that's how I got my training in designing all these flyers and posters for free for, for my friends. Um, and my first ever, I think, proper graphic design job was for a punk band, yeah, one of my friends' punk band called Promotious Rise. This is their first record that they came out with, and this is the, the cover artwork. I, I used to tease them and make fun of their cover artwork, and I just jokingly said, hey, the next time you're coming out with a new record, just let me design it up. Yeah? And, a year later, they actually came up to me. Hey, you promise? You say you can design our cover? Design the next one. So this is the design that I came up with. I got paid, and they gave me 20 copies of this record as payment. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my proper first graphic design job back in 1997. Yeah, for this band called Promises Rise. So I was there for, from 95 to 99. So I missed the whole reformasi period, lah. 98. I was there. I kind of followed a bit the news about what's happening in Malaysia, but I'm not, I wasn't there, you know. Uh, tak rasa lah dekat masa aku dekat sana, ya, pasal the reformasi. Uh, so I wasn't, I'm, a lot of the people my age, yeah, got their awareness through reformasi. Yeah, they, they're called the reformasi generation. I'm part of that, but I didn't get my awareness from reformasi lah, but same period lah, yeah. So I completely missed the whole reformasi. So, January 2000, I came back to Malaysia, yeah? And I thought, since punk rock in, inspired and influenced me so much, raised my political awareness, I thought I wanted to give back by forming my own <laughs> political punk band called Skull Crusher. I play guitar and I sing in the band. That's me. Yeah, 17 years ago. Um, but, so, 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 so I have this band, yeah? So, the lyrics are like very aggressive, hardcore, punk, D-beat, yeah, band. Um, and with, with political lyrics, yeah, singing about ISA, you know, freedom of speech, yeah, human rights and whatnot. Uh, but uh, one thing I discovered, yeah, as a medium, music is a powerful medium. Yeah, it inspired me, you know, it affected me so much. But uh, as a medium to get your message out there, yeah, you have a limited audience if you play punk rock music. Yeah, because only punks come to your shows. <laughs> only punks would buy your CD if you put out a CD or record. You know, so you're preaching to the same crowd. Yeah, you're not really reaching the audience that maybe really really need the message that you are trying to communicate. Yeah, so uh, that's how that's that's where I, I discovered the limitation. Yeah, of of this particular medium. Yeah, music, punk rock music. Yeah, um, because I was so because I was away for so long, I was a bit out of touch with what's happening in Malaysia, especially politically. Yeah, so I started uh, volunteering um, for human rights NGOs like Amnesty International, Malaysia, and Swadhara Malaysia, another prominent human rights NGO based in Kuala Lumpur. And I started attending all the events and programs and screenings and talks that they organized just to educate myself um, with what's happening in Malaysia at that time. Um, and I soon discovered that all these different NGOs, yeah, they, they have a lot of important issues and message yeah, that they want to get out there. They want to reach an audience. yeah. But they have a problem in, I think they have, they put out a lot of posters and brochures and leaflets and booklets, yeah? But they usually have no money to hire designers, 
Yeah. Since I have, since I did some design, eh, punk poster design, yeah, okay lah, can lah, yeah. So I started volunteering my services. I started doing design work for NGOs, all these all these human rights NGOs, pro bono for free, yeah. While doing all this design work, I actually got my training lah, yeah, in proper graphic design work lah. So these are some of the my early design work. That's how I started doing graphic design um, as a living. I started out doing it for free. But I think after three, four times, they started feeling guilty of exploiting me, lah. You know? And that's when they started paying me. Yeah, they paid me 50 ringgit for a poster design, 100 ringgit, 200 ringgit. And, I, and, and then I didn't want to be an, an engineer, lah. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> So I figured, yeah, this is one way I can make a living. So that's how I started doing a freelance graphic design. I still continue to do freelance graphic design work uh, until today. But I started out just doing graphic design for free, yeah, for different human rights NGOs based in Malaysia. 2003, yeah. At that time, this guy was still the Prime Minister, Mahade, our the longest serving Prime Minister, 22 years. He was the Prime Minister of Malaysia. So in 2003, yeah, he introduced this new proposal, yeah, this new program called the National Service or Himan Negara. Yeah, you guys remember that? Yeah. Who went to National Service? Anyone here went to National Service? Got there one, two. Uh, got there, uh. Originally, yeah, the proposal, uh, when it was reported in the media the first time, uh, it was compulsory for everyone. Yeah. Immediately after high school, everyone had to go to National Service. Two years or more, similar like Singapore lah, yeah. With military training, yeah. That was the original idea, more similar to national service in Singapore, yeah. Uh, uniform body lah, you can have paksa lah, yeah. Those yang tak tak mau pergi, you can you can you can be fined or can face jail. But when they propose this 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 program, yeah, they never consulted any of these young people that are kena paksa pergi. Betul lah. They never consulted oh. the public, Betul. and all the mainstream media only reported all the uh, positive aspects of the program. Yeah, only all the voices that are supportive of the program, all the voices criticizing this proposal, none of them get reported in the media. Yeah, and, and yeah, you guys know lah, Malaysia mainstream media, especially the newspapers. Yeah, and broadcast were heavily controlled and censored. Yeah, and I was a bit. Um, uh, upset that none of the voices of protests are being reported. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to do, especially I have a younger sister that, uh, that was that age. Yeah, about uh, eligible to go lah, will be forced to go. Meaning, yeah. So uh, uh, and I asked her, eh, do you want to go to this program?" And eh? she said, "No." Yeah, siapa nak pergi? Kena paksa baru pergi kan, tu lah. Yeah, and none of her friends pun nak pergi. Uh, so. They are, they are, especially young people, banyak yang protest, but their voice, their voices are not heard. Yeah, so I wanted to do something about that. But what can I do? Yeah, um, so I came up with this idea. Uh, maybe there is something that I can do. Yeah, so I came up with this design. Yeah, it's a, it's a caricature of Made. Yeah, to closing the mulut Buddha. Yeah, and it's just a simple slogan: No national service. No one national service. Yeah. And and so I got this graphic. So what do I do with it? Yeah, it's graffiti. Yeah. So I design. It's a stencil. Yeah. I just cut out uh, the stencil on a piece of A3 paper. I just go out to the city and just start spray painting this graffiti everywhere. <laughs> Simple, lah. Eh? Because because we have no access to the media. The media is not gonna gonna air our voices of protest and so we need to get our voice out there lah and so yeah the the streets lah yeah the jalanan lah so yeah it's just me and the spray can and the stencil and back then the spray can is just four ringgit the spray can a piece of paper cost nothing yeah and I spray painted I think hundreds of these stencils yeah and I started doing other stencils as well. Lah. Yeah. I started small lah. and then I think uh, more ambitious or make bigger, make bigger. So I make bigger. <laughs> yeah. But it's 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 interesting lah. every time uh, because every time uh, I go spray painting at night lah. But the next day in the morning and I would go back to the scene of the crime and 
and I, I'll, I'll stand maybe 50 meters away yeah, just to see people's reaction. Because before, when they go to work, it's just an empty wall. Suddenly, there's this space, you know? Uh, but the most interesting reaction, I wasn't there to see it, yeah? But I saw some yellow liquid stain on Mahathir in your mouth. <laughs> uh, you can agar lah, apa the yellow liquid on Mahathir in your mouth. Uh, so, so I started branching out and using graffiti as a medium um, to comment on different issues. Yeah, this one in particular is about the uh, university students. They have this law called AUKU. Yeah, that prohibits students from actively participating in politics. Yeah, so one student that was politically active was, um, I think, was suspended from university because she was politically active. Yeah. That's the that's the student yeah, next to my poster. Uh, these are just some of the my graffiti work lah. And at that time, uh, it was it was anonymous lah. No one know, no one knows who does who did some of all this graffiti lah. Yeah. So from 2003 to 2004, 2004, 2005, yeah, uh, most of my work were in this form lah, anonymous street uh, graffiti. Yeah, and one of my, one of the biggest you know, graffiti piece is this one. Yeah, it's it's a it's a life size one. Yeah, and and I made this in 2004. Yeah, interestingly, um, after the Tunisian and Egyptian revolution in 2011, and I was reading up articles about it, and and I discovered, I found these images. These are murals painted during the Tunisian revolution and after the after after the Tunisian revolution and after the Egyptian revolution inspired by my graffiti because uh, after I every time after I you know spray paint graffiti I would take a photo and back then there was this online portal called stencil revolution where people can upload images of their graffiti work. Yeah so I just uploaded it anonymously. So I think the Tunisian and Egyptian activists found that photo. Yeah, were inspired by it and you know, turn it into murals in Tunisia and Egypt. And I, I, I think it, it's I, I find it interesting la, and inspiring la. Yeah, that a uh, piece of graffiti from Malaysia, yeah, that is still living under this authoritarian country, yeah, inspired, yeah, people in this um, that 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 led or sparked the revolutions yeah, in their countries. 2003. Oh, but the National Service, pro the, my protest didn't work. Lah. Yeah. <laughs> they just installed the program, with, the, but they made changes to it. Yeah. But I think, uh, regardless, it's important, I think, to voice our protest. Yeah. So that's the point. Yeah. So 2003, Mahade finally stepped down after 22 years uh, in power as the Prime Minister. And to commemorate uh, the day he stepped down, I designed this poster. <laughs> 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 but, but back then I didn't I didn't get into trouble for it lah because yeah.